the 1990s come along, and the first album that Alice released in the 1990s was 1991's A Stupid. Compared to Trash, this is an improvement, but it still has its weaknesses. Um, again, Alice was still writing with outside songwriters like Desmond Child, which I think turned some people off about this album. But the other thing about this is that there's 12 songs on here, which uh, really isn't that much of a surprise because at this point in the music business, uh, CDs were becoming the norm. And sooner or later, artists found out that you didn't have to keep an album to 40 to 45 minutes. You could put everything on there, which I think is also a positive because there are some, I think there are more good songs on here than there are on Trash. Hey Stupid, the title track is good. Uh, Love's a Loaded Gun is good too. Snake Bite is decent. Burning Our Bed, Pass. Dangerous Tonight is okay. Might as well be on Mars. I heard in Alice's podcast, he used to have podcasts for his radio show. He, he's given up on it since then. He still does his radio show, but uh, not the podcast. I remember hearing one a question that was asked of him was, which song is he most proud of? What, what is the best song that he's ever written or that he's most proud of? And he said, well, some people might be surprised, but it's a song called Might As Well Be On Mark. After listening to this song, I'm, I can see why he would say that. So I'm in between with that one. Uh, Feed My Frankenstein, best song on here probably, uh, and featured in Wayne's World, uh, which Alice made a cameo in. My favorite scene from that movie. <laughs> Hurricane Years is good. What about Little's catchy? Die For You, I think was a song written with Nikki Six from Molly Crew. I shouldn't like it, but what the hell, I like it. Dirty Dreams is good, and then it ends with a wind-up toy, which is wonderful and uh, has references to uh, Steven at the end there. However, 1994, uh, I think this was Alice's true comeback album, and that is The Last Temptation. Great album. Great, great album. This one follows a concept. So what the concept is. Uh, well, there is a graphic novel that was tied or a series of comic books, I could, which later became a graphic novel. I did check it out at the library many, many years ago, like 10 or 11 years ago. The graphic novel was okay. It's all summed up in the first song, Sideshow, that uh, the ringmaster said, boy, you can stick around. I mean, if you just go with that, then you can ease your way through the album. And it deals with themes such as... Uh, I guess growing up in some bad place alone, I mean, just being on the streets. There's some religious overtones. Tons of favorites. Sideshow's great. Nothing's free is good. Lost in America is funny. Bad place alone is good. Uh, Love, You're My Temptation, very heavy. Stolen Prayer is good. Holy War is good. Lullaby King. Oh, now I remember Lullaby. Yeah. Great. Lullaby's good. Uh, it's me. Cleanse My Fire. This is probably one of his, his first in a while that was really good from top to bottom. Highly recommended. And that album was released in 1984. And believe it or not, it was the last Alice Cooper album that would be released for six years. So he didn't release another album until the year 2000. However, in between that time span, in 1997, a live album was released called A Fistful of Alice. A Fistful of Alice, I think, was a show recorded in 1985. And uh, compared to the other live album they had, which is The Alice Cooper Show, yeah, it, A Fistful of Alice is the better album. Um, because Alice is sober, for one. And two, uh, has a couple of uh, special guests. Like, he gets Slash for Lost in America. Rob Zombie to come up and sing with him for, um, what was it? Uh, Feed My Frankenstein. And there's a lot of cameos, and he sort of talks to the audience, and I uh, don't know if the, the concert was ever released on video. I, I don't know. Uh, and there's also a really good studio track, a uh, brand new studio track at the end of the album called Is Anyone Home? 
Then come 2000, Alice Cooper releases his first album since The Last Temptation. And this album is considered by many to be his heaviest. And I would agree. Brutal Planet. This album took a while to grow on me here. Uh, it's... When I first heard it, I just thought, how can people like this? It's just, it's just too heavy for me. But after listening to it, after a while, this really is a good album. Think of it as his response to the new metal that was happening. It was his response to all the Marilyn Mansons, the Rob Zombies, and uh, you know, here's Alice's take on that. And uh, it's a really good album. Going by the tracking list of uh, Brutal Planet, great opener, Wicked Young Man, he still plays live sometimes. Sanctuary, Balls Out, uh, heavy. Um, especially during the chorus. Um, Pessimistic's good. I like Gimme. It's the little things. Uh, even on one of his heaviest downs, the guy can still manage to be silly. Take It Like a Woman is almost an offspring of um, Only Women Bleed. It ends with Cold Machines, which uh, pulls up the album nicely. And it's said that this does follow some sort of concept. Uh, that, all right. I don't know about that. I just think it's good. As an album, it's good. And then the next year, Alice makes a follow-up to it, uh, Dragon Town. And this is thought to be a sequel to uh, Brutal Planet. Because there are some mentions in the lyrics to be able to the songs from that album. For me, it's just another album by Alice. Um, it's not bad, but it's not one that I come back to often. Uh, going by the songs here, so I can remember. Trigger Man's good. The title track is good. Sex, Death, and Money is pretty heavy. Fantasy Man is a funny song. Disgrace Land uh, is obviously is a Elvis uh, parody. Uh, Every Woman Has a Name. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah, and that's about it. I mean, it's not a bad album, but for me, eh. Those songs are just good enough.